Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, my name is Shelly. I'm a second grade teacher in Northern California and we are starting the year virtually. So today's vlog is going to be a day in the life of a teacher vlog, except it is distance learning style because that is our reality right now and that's okay. So. I'm really excited about this vlog because I finally feel like I'm getting into a groove. This will be our second full week of distance learning. Despite the fact that my classroom is a hot mess, I'm finally starting to wrap my head around second grade curriculum and how I'm going to be rolling everything out virtually. So I'm also really excited because I'm going to share a lot of things with you today. I really want to share our Zoom schedule because that was one of the hardest things for me to dial down. I wanna share that with you in case you need some ideas as far as how to map out your day. I also wanna to talk to you about some supplemental curriculum that I found that I'm gonna be using, um, some activities that we're gonna be doing, because let's be real, in virtual learning, we need all the help we can get. So I'm really excited to share some of this stuff with you guys. I have my first Zoom in about 15 minutes, which means in five minutes, I have to start my 10 minute countdown timer. So I really quickly just wanna walk you through what we're gonna be doing today, briefly, and then after our first Zoom, I'm gonna backtrack and I'm gonna dive in. So that being said, let me show you what we have going on. So I shared this in my last distance learning vlog. Um, I write down what I'm doing in my morning zoom and my afternoon zoom, just so if I like totally lose track, I can just peek up and look um, in order. So we have officially dove into math curriculum. So we're starting with our morning meeting. Then we are doing a spiral math review page, which I've shared before. And then Swan is our curriculum and we are doing lesson two today. Yesterday we did lesson one and it actually went really well. And I'm having the kids take a photo of their work in Google Slides and post it to Google Classroom and that's how I'm checking their work. And then the afternoon I'm showing them how to get onto Epic Books. We're gonna do a read aloud, Arthur's Tooth, and then we're gonna do a shared write of concepts of print. So I'm gonna do an anchor chart and we're gonna talk all about the cover of the book. We don't start our reading curriculum um, unit one until next week. So this week we are just kind of reviewing some first grade skills um, in our PM block. We're also starting guided reading next week. Okay, I have more time than I thought um, before we start. I realized that at 8.50 I start my countdown and it's only 8.40. So I wanna talk to you about our Zoom schedule because like I said, this was something that was really hard for me to wrap my head around. In my district, in second grade, we have to have a face-to-face -face synchronous learning for 55 minutes a day. We are required to do that. Um, our team kind of sat down and we realized 55 minutes is just not enough with all the things that we have to do. We're already scaling back because it's distance learning, so we thought 55 minutes isn't gonna be enough. So we're required 55, we're doing more. Then we have to provide the kids a total of 230 minutes of learning, and that's including that 55 minutes. So that being said, the way that I am breaking up my day is, we start our first Zoom at 9 a.m. and we are doing a morning meeting and spiral math review check all together every single morning from 9 to 9.20, okay? So we're all together for 20 minutes. And then I am teaching math in two separate groups. I'm teaching the same lesson twice, but I'm finding that having 25 kids all on my screen is hard for me to manage. Kids aren't as confident to ask questions. So I'm teaching my more proficient math group first because it typically goes a little bit quicker. So from 920 to 940. And then my second group jumps on at 940. And in theory, I teach from 940 to 10, but then I have like office hours extra help from like 10 o'clock to 1015. So if that second group goes longer, totally fine. My first group, if they wanna hang back and watch the lesson again, they're more than welcome to. I'm finding that this is what's really, really working for me. So that is our morning chunk. And then I am done Zooming until 12.30. So between like 10.30 and 12.30, I am prepping for the following day. I am prepping for the afternoon, just doing all kinds of things. And I feel like it's still not enough time. So let me backtrack a little bit. That is what our morning looks like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Because in my district, Wednesday is our collaboration day. So we only Zoom with our kids for one hour and I'll talk about Wednesdays in just a second. So the next chunk of our day is the afternoon. We all come back together at 12.30 and we do a whole group reading slash writing mini lesson for 30 minutes from 12.30 to one. And then from one to two, that's when I'm breaking out into my guided reading group. I have four guided reading groups and I'll show you what I'm using for guided reading in just a little bit. Um, and each group is 15 minutes. It's craziness, but that's how I'm gonna have to roll it out. So I have small groups from one to two and then we are done Zooming at two o'clock. So I do that schedule, that afternoon schedule, Monday, 
Tuesday, Thursday. So we do three days of small group. So on Wednesdays, because I only have the kids for an hour, we do our morning meeting, we do our spiral math re review. I do a math lesson whole group. And then at the end of the hour, we do our student of the week. So that's our star student. They get to do their sharing. And that's what we do on Wednesdays. And then on Friday afternoons, because we aren't doing small groups, we have our whole group reading writing lesson. Um, this is when I get to supplement with um, science and social studies in the afternoon, as well as like read alouds, character ed stuff. That's what we're doing that second chunk of the Friday afternoon. So this is how I have it mapped out right now. It seems like it's working. Obviously we're gonna tweak things as we need to, but like I said, so far, so good. Um, it's the only way I can wrap my head around doing this virtually. All right, so the second piece to this is how do I check the kids work? What is the situation? So I mentioned it just a second ago, but um, we found a way to attach an empty Google slide to an assignment on Google Classroom, and then the kids can click insert image, and then they use their Chromebook screen to take a photo of their work and then turn that in. So that's a quick way for us to check because in second grade, they really need to have the pencil on paper. If we're virtual the whole year, eventually we're gonna shift to Cami where they're inputting things digitally. But for right now, because we're pretty much teaching first graders, we really wanna see the pencil on paper and that work. So we thought this is the best way to check what they're doing. Also, my school, I guess my district, is allowing a pickup drop off of supplies once a month. So every four weeks, which is awesome because any projects or writing that the kids do, we can collect after four weeks and then I can give them materials. So for example, I'll be getting, giving them their guided reading readers next week when, I think next week or two weeks when we get to see the kids. Um, so that is helping a lot. Again, not ideal, but this whole situation isn't ideal. So um, I'm grateful that we are able to do those things. Okay, so the next thing I do is I lay out all the things that I need for my math. I have a timer going right here as I'm admitting students so they know when that comes down that class will start. So I have to teach these little kiddos. I will see you in a little bit. Okay, so our morning Zoom is done. I'm really sorry I have the wrong camera lens with me today, so you're a lot closer than normal, but that's okay. So I'm gonna show you kind of what we did for math. I'm not gonna show you our math curriculum, it's pretty standard. Um, but we do do this spiral math review that I think is really, really helpful. My team teacher got this off Teachers Pay Teachers. I'm going to try and find it, but I'm sure if you just like go to Teachers Pay Teachers and look up second grade spiral math review, it will probably pop up. But I have them do one day for um, synchronous learning, so an assignment at home, and then the next morning we look over it together. So today um, we reviewed day one. So there's five little problems, and again, it's a spiral review. So as we go through the year, it matches um, at least California second grade standards, which is great. Um, so today they're assigned to do day two, and then in the morning we will check it, okay? So I don't have them turn this in. This is quite literally just for practice. This would probably be morning work if we were in the classroom. So when we come back to the classroom, that will be morning work. Um, and then we did our lesson out of our book. So in the afternoon, we're going to read Arthur's Tooth and we're gonna do a shared write. Um, first, we're gonna spend the first chunk, I'm gonna show them Epic Books, the website, our class code, all that fun stuff. Um, and then I'm gonna read Arthur's Tooth and I'm gonna make an anchor chart, except it's gonna be on this whiteboard, um, which I'm so excited that I have. I've had this in my house because I didn't need it in sixth grade and now I need it and I'm so excited that I have it. So this is from uh, National Business Furniture, which is the same place I have my um, awesome green couches from. I will link it down below. They are also offering you guys 10%. They have been for like the last year, which is awesome. Um, so that's where I got this bad boy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, just draw my anchor chart with whiteboard marker and then I'll use that to do a shared write. So I'm gonna draw a, a book and ask the kids what's on the cover. So when they tell me title, I'm gonna write where the title is, author, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm gonna do a shared write. Normally I would do it on anchor chart, but I'm gonna do it on just like lined paper underneath the document camera. And so I'm gonna say, what might the title tell us? And little Billy might be like, the title gives us information about the story. So we're gonna do a shared write and I'm gonna show them how I would write a complete sentence Billy learned that the title gives us information about the story. And as we do our share write, we'll do like three sentences and then we'll go back and we'll talk about um, some of the words in there, punctuation, et cetera, et cetera. Again, we're not starting our actual benchmark curriculum or reading curriculum until next week. So I'm gonna be doing shared writes through the week 
just to get them exposed to thinking about what we read. So that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, I had to put you down because my arm was getting tired. Um, so after I finish my morning Zoom, I have like 100 sticky notes of like things I need to do. So what I need to do right now is create the anchor chart that I just talked about. Um, I need to actually go get the book from my team teacher. Um, that's not the right list. I told you I have hundreds of lists. Um, I already went through and I checked all of our like online assignments and things. So I did that right after. Um, and then I need to print out a bazillion things. So we have purchased a separate writing curriculum um, because if you guys use Benchmark, it's good, but I hate Benchmark writing. I didn't use it in third grade. Um, I just didn't like the layout. So as a team, we purchased a unit off Teachers Pay Teachers that we're gonna be using for writing and I will show you that in just a minute. And because I'm so extra and I feel like I really struggled with guided reading in third grade, I felt like I was wasting a lot of time and I wasn't using my time wisely and I refused to do that in second grade. I have readers that are level C and level M. So I have to do small group. I have to do guided reading, um, which is fine. So I found this woman, she's actually on YouTube, that's how I found her. And I can't remember her name and I'm so sorry, I will link her down below, but she creates guided reading units and they're amazing. And after I print them, I will show them to you and I will make sure to link it down below. Um, it's really expensive, I think it's like 200 bucks for all of it, but our PTO reimburses us if we buy things like this. So I don't mind, I will have them all this year and if I stay in primary, I will have them throughout my career. So I'm really excited and it's worth the money. So I need to print out all of those things and if I have time, I can start assembling them. I'm gonna be doing binders for my writing units and for all of my reading levels, which the binders for my reading levels aren't here, but that's okay. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna get some of this done. <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm gonna have just the front cover of a book and I'm gonna kind of prompt them what might go up here the title what's that's gonna tell us and then I'll just jot down some notes what might go in the middle pictures what are you the pictures gonna tell us and then author and illustrator so that's going to guide our discussion and then based on what they say is what I'm gonna use for our shared right I'm thinking this whole thing will take like 15 minutes maybe 20 um, so that was really easy Okay, so now I wanna show you our writing curriculum. Um, we purchased this from Learning at the Primary Pond. We only purchased the first four units. Um, unit one is kind of like setting up writer's workshop um, and we do, where you do like a lot of pre-tests and pre-assessments and things like that. And then uh, personal narrative, informational and opinion. So I really like the curriculum because she has like detailed lessons and then all the materials that go with each lesson, which is great. And granted some of the lessons I will probably skip, especially because we are doing distance learning, but I love that now I have second grade writing curriculum. Hopefully I'll teach second grade again at some point in my career. Um, so yesterday I printed units one and personal narrative. So, um, it's a lot of printing, but once it's done, it's done. So I still have to print informational and opinion, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I went and hole punched all of these units so these are ready to go so today's tuesday and i totally forgot that my team teacher and i plan on tuesdays which is great um it's good because we plan really early and we think the same so we can flush out a lot of our ideas which is awesome however that means i'm gonna have to do more in the afternoon but that's okay because i have an appointment at four and chris is getting caged so i have like almost three hours in my room after my morning, I'm sorry, after my afternoon Zoom. So I'm gonna go plan and I will check back in with you guys a little bit later. And somehow it is 1.15, which is insane. So um, like I said, I went and I planned with my team teacher, which is awesome because we got to flush out a lot of stuff. 
I decided, so in the beginning of this, I talked about reading groups and math. That is starting next week. Um, or so I thought. So I'm teaching the two math groups, but reading groups I was planning on starting next week. However, my team teacher said she doesn't even start reading groups in the classroom until October. And I've been very overwhelmed trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to get them all their materials, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, don't start reading groups right away. We still have to work through phonics and we still have so many other things we can do whole group. So I don't think I'm going to start reading groups until at least two weeks from now. And I think that's going to make me a lot less stressed and I think it'll actually benefit the kids too. So, so that's making me feel a lot better. Um, I want to show you what we did this afternoon. Okay, so we talked about the different parts of the book, title, picture, author. We talked about illustrator. I just didn't write it here. And then I did a shared write. So this is what we did. We wrote this together and I went really slow. I sounded out some words and made sure we used finger spaces, capital letters, punctuation. I said, I don't know how to spell the word book. And one of my students told me, and then when I wrote it again, I said, look, we can use what we've already learned later on in our writing. So it was just a shared write, just because it's been so long since they've actually had direct writing instruction. So that went well. And this is the book that we read, Arthur's Tooth. So before I start printing and putting things together, I need to like set my day up for tomorrow so I can just walk in and teach. That's just something that I have to do for my brain. So to do that, I'm going to erase this board over here and rewrite what I have going on tomorrow. And then I'm gonna pull out all the materials and things that I need. And then I'm gonna print and show you my guided reading and my intervention binders that I just bought and I'm so excited about. Okay, so this is the guided reading product that I purchased. It's amazing. So this is one of the bundles. She has other ones that go all the way up to level O. Um, so I just wanted to show you it here so you could see what it looked like. Sorry for the screaming baby in the background. Um, here's a quick preview. Again, I will link this all down below, but it is full of printable readers and all kinds of activities and lesson plans that go along with them. So I am so excited to use this. Like I said, I've always struggled with guided reading. So I am really excited for this and very grateful for her. Okay, so I lied. I was actually able to print the intervention binder and I wanna show it to you. Um, so it looks like this and I will have her linked down below. So I struggled with intervention when I taught third grade because I had some really low readers. Um, so I'm so excited about this. So. There are a ton of different activities. I have them all printed out over there. So there are different categories. I just laminated, this is all part of the product she sells. So multi-syllabic words, suffixes, silent E words, vowel teams, um, other long vowels, R controlled vowels, diphthongs, and fluency. So I'm for sure going to be using this for at least a section of my guided reading for my lower groups and I'm so excited. This is definitely something I struggled with. So like, for example, these are some of the multi-syllabic word pages. Um, there are fluency passages, so fingers, which is awesome, um, suffixes. I mean, just so many different intervention activities. So I think I'm gonna put these in pocket sleeves back to back and then um, if I pull them back for intervention one-on-one, -on -one, they can use the dry erase marker or if I need to copy them um, so everyone can have one. They are just right there and ready to go. So I've spent this last time making these things, laminating this, um, and I don't have enough sheet protectors to do all of that right now and or time. So I'm just going to slide them in the correct category and then I will get to that another day. So the reason I'm so excited about this is because no matter what grade I teach, I am always going to have struggling readers and kids that need intervention. So yeah, it's a pain to print everything, but now I have it forever and I'm really excited about it. So this is her ELA number two intervention. She even has one for way, way, way emergent readers. So like K1. Um, so I will definitely link her down below. I am so excited to use it. And then I will also link all the guided reading stuff down below for you as well. Um, okay. So that is pretty much going to wrap up our day. It's 3.15. I have to leave in about 20 minutes for my appointment. So I'm going to end this vlog here. If you guys enjoy these teaching vlogs, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I am so happy to be back in the classroom. If you have not already, go ahead and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of this insanity that is distance learning. Um, I'm actually okay. I have a positive mindset and I hope you do too. So I love you guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye.